Hey, what's good, Fight Fans? Peace. This is your man Wood, host of the Bite Down Boxing Podcast, uh, host of the Pay Me No Mind Podcast, or now YouTube channel, Sports and Entertainment. Just wanted to weigh in really quickly with, uh, I saw a clip earlier uh, with uh, with uh, Anthony Joshua. Man, got my notes right here. But Anthony Joshua was on uh, first take, it looks like, with uh, Max Kellerman and uh, Molly Karim, hyphen Rose, and um, settled some things for us, I believe. Uh, one thing, you know, as I was making some other videos of breaking down fights, especially Wilder Fury and um, what was that, Pavetkin and um, Joshua's fight, talking through those. There was some, you know, different people commented, whatever, whatever, one way or the other. Um, I like AJ. I like AJ a lot. I like AJ in the Wilder fight. Not saying today that I say he beats him, but I like his chances in that fight. Uh, I like Deontay Wilder. I wish he uh, add more to his game. And... I'm a new, newer fan, a newer fan of Tyson Fury. Uh, not a, not a huge fan of the heavyweight division going back the last 10, 12 years. Not my favorite division. So I'm glad that these three leaders have emerged and that there's a third party. I understand the mechanics of a lot of this stuff with, uh, you know, Fury coming along or coming back at just the right time for, um, you know, to help Deontay Wilder's case and, and gaining leverage in the negotiations for the uh, the Joshua fight. I'm not an idiot. Um, I did think that, I mean, before I get into my thing here about the first take, but if you want to say that, that Joshua can do the same thing that Floyd does, or Floyd used to do. And Floyd, Joshua doesn't have to go look for a fight or doesn't have to go chase opponents or whatever, whatever. I really wasn't saying that he lost on the night uh, of the Wilder and Fury fight that he lost uh, a whole lot. It was figuratively. Um, him being the face of the heavyweight division was diminished on that night as two guys put it on the line and had a thrilling fight. So... Was he supposed to be there in the crowd? I felt like he could have. We know it's not his style to get in the ring and be confrontational. We know that it's not him to do a lot of talking and um, so on and so forth. Uh, lastly, before I get into my thoughts on the first take thing, it kills me because it's, I don't know about you and for many, but to sit around and call fighters or say that fighters are afraid of one of of one another just routinely it's just reckless in my opinion and it's low hanging fruit in my in my opinion in this situation with Joshua and Wilder i don't believe that that uh that AJ is afraid of a uh, a Wilder afraid to face Wilder um i think there was a i think him and Eddie Hearn were buying some time Honestly, over the last, uh, you know, 18 months, 12 months, I think they were buying some time to see where Joshua was to make sure that he could figure out different situations, that he could uh, survive certain experiences. Um, I do think they were buying themselves some time, but I think over the last three or four fights, I think they've seen what they need to see that to think that. Uh, you know, he could face Wilder and weather the storm and and uh, figure some things out. Um, you know, I, 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 with the exception of the Parker fight, I thought a lot of the needle was trending completely in the right direction for uh, for Joshua. So, like I said, for me, when I tune in, when I check out some of these podcasts and, and, and some of the, the other guys doing their thing, and that's the 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 uh, the messaging that you want to run with for this. I really don't know how to respond to that. Like, I, I, I like I said, it's easy, it's not difficult to do. But I've been on some of the conference calls 
with Joshua and he's explained some different things in depth about his thoughts on his fight and it's it's not a matter it, to me it was never a matter of fear and then he does hold a lot of the cards he you know his his his, his uh you know his ticket sales uh the belts the number of belts he holds i can't argue that the guy should just do whatever uh some people say he should do to make the the wild the the fight with Wilder. I don't agree with that. I mean I just don't. But let's get into it, man. He said it. Point 1. He said it today. Now he did look away from the camera if you want to be if you want to pick through the details. He did look away from the camera after he said I want to tell everybody right here and then when he got to talking about Wilder, he started looking back at uh back at Max, Max Kellerman, if you want to run in that direction. But, like you said, I think he wants to fight. I felt like in watching him walk out to the, uh, and I know some people could say something about his performance against Takam. Okay, I hear you. Uh, I felt like the, the comfort and the confidence that I saw with him walking to the ring uh, against Povetkin, I feel like he's a guy that's 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 very sure of himself right now and, and knows how to uh how to get into to the to the mood and the mode when it's fight time. So um you know it's a lot of responsibility with that fight, with him going into these arenas, 70, 80 something, 85,000 people there. And I think that's I don't see that being a burden on him any longer as he's going into these situations. So um he said it. I mean, what what more does he have to say? Like he said, I don't. He he said, I don't know what more I have to say to let people know this. Um, you know, they did, and he mentioned about you know that, that he went out and booked the date, and uh, you know he 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 was set to go. Now we don't know what the the the, the money talk will be, the splits will be, and and so on and so forth, but. Um, I have no problem with him controlling all the other stuff. That's what you do when you're the A-side. And he's clearly, in my opinion, he's clearly in charge of this, this situation. Him and, him, him and Eddie Hearn. So, anyway, he said it. I think um, moving through the... And I also think of some stuff I've said on the podcast lately. I've been talking with Eddie Hearn in Chicago, listening to Eddie Hearn. Uh, they understand that the fight has cooked. You know, it's ready. It's ready to be served. I think I get the feel that they understand that. Uh, money wise, we'll see what they do. With you know, if the if the if the hang up continues to be money, I mean, we'll see. Second thing that he said was he's not interested in fighting Tyson Fury, and I just thought it was hilarious. Uh, you know, he said that. When did this lineal title popped up out of the woods? And he said, uh, when he became a heavyweight or got into the heavyweight, got into boxing professionally, he said all he cared about was the WBA, the WBC, IBF, WBO, and IBO, and said that he had four of them. And uh, it almost reminded me, um, you know, of the unwritten rules in baseball. Uh, or uh, I know back in 2008, uh, my shirt says here, um, Donovan McNabb had a tie game against the Cincinnati Bengals and didn't show a lot of urgency at the end of that game and then told the reporter, you know, then when it went into overtime and there was no uh, winner and it, it became a tie, uh, you know, a 10-year veteran in Donovan McNabb was like, I, I didn't even know you could tie a game. Uh, so it's, it's, it's no problem to me if that's the narrative that you want to run with that this lineal title. I mean, to be honest, I'm not the, I'm not the most knowledgeable person on. I, I, I'm aware of the lineal title, um, but it, it seems like the significance of it here is more for marketing purposes. For for Fury to have some kind of, uh, it's like if we're selling late season college football game or early season college football games. And we need these early, these first three, four weeks of the season, we need these games to be significant. So if we do have a number two against a number six, uh, that's great. 
is it, 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 something. It's a way to get people in the seats. So I think you know the lineal title here. We don't hear about it in many other divisions, honestly. So uh, lastly, he said, um, and I don't know if this was really a shot at Deontay Wilder talking about you know I don't come on TV. I don't come out here with uh, my diamonds on talking about my pay-per-view numbers. I mean, the pay-per-view numbers would probably be something to Wilder, although I haven't really heard Wilder talking a whole lot about numbers. But Wilder doesn't wear a lot of diamonds. Uh, he does He does have a couple chains and some jewelry that he wears, but I don't think it's all that gaudy. Uh, I don't think so. Maybe at different times he's worn some stuff in a couple of fights to make a statement or, you know, depending on what his role was on fight night, you know, I don't see nothing wrong with that. But uh, maybe it was just uh, something to aggrav aggravate American uh, fight fans, black American fight fans who thought he might have been, who may take this tomorrow and run with it, that he was trying to take some kind of shot or that he doesn't connect with American fight fans. Uh, who knows how it gets spun. But, um, but again, this is consistent with how he's carried and conducted himself. And uh, he said, I'm about my business. And um, like I said, I tried to tell another commenter. I'm not, I don't have any issue really with the way that, uh, that Joshua conducts himself and moves about. I really, uh, I really like a lot about Joshua. And, and, and everybody doesn't need to be uh, as aggressive as uh, the Charlos, you know, with Jamel confronting uh Jared Hurd in the ring, you know, a couple weeks ago at the Wilder Fury fight. You know, everybody doesn't have to do the same thing. Um, it's good to have different, you know, different different um, personas and whatnot out there. So I'm cool with AJ on this. But like I said, I, less, I thought it was good that he got on ESPN. While well, since he has been in the city, because I saw a picture of him in New York City in, in Central Park uh, yesterday, and I was like, oh, you're stateside. So, uh, which dispels one thing, one myth out there that he can't come to America, which he's already been here because of some drug charge or something back in the day. He couldn't get a visa or whatever, whatever. Um, but he's, like I said, he's been in the country before for other things, for Under Armour and uh I thought for maybe one Floyd fighter or something, I, I thought he was over here for for a fight at one point in time. But um, yeah, so I, I hopefully that answers some questions for some people. I'm sure though, even with him saying that, that there's a faction out there that will find a way to say that means nothing. Uh, if you want to run with that, you know that's out there. But I do think he wants to fight. I don't know, and, and then for the pro, the uncon the, the unconditional uh, uh, stands for Joshua. Like I've re replied, you know, on a couple different videos, I'm not gonna sit here and take up and defend Joshua because at the end of the day, they have a big fight to uh, to deliver for April 13th. Not just any name can go in that blank. So question me all you want. About, you know, if I'm somebody said I, I said a comment on another video and it, it was a lot of salt in it for, towards AJ. Again, I had no problem with AJ, but you got to deliver with this fight, whether or not it's Wilder or, or Fury. Uh, I'm not watching or I have no concerns about Joshua Chisor or Joshua White. I really don't. Or Yusick. If that was even a possibility. Like a lot of these names. Anyway, that's a totally different video. I'm already running all over and everything. So I was going to do a podcast tonight to get into some things. Recap last week's fights uh, on top rank on ESPN. And maybe get into tomorrow night's great fights uh, from Corpus Christi. I may do the I may do the podcast after this. I got to get something to eat. But um, hey, we move a step. Ahead, you know, I can't say a step closer, but uh, please subscribe to the channel, leave some comments if you want to chop it up. Although, like I said, I don't we didn't really solve anything to say uh, today, but it was good to see uh, AJ speaking, um, rather uh, candidly.
and free freely. And uh, we'll see how uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Hey, I'm out. Peace.